All right, and as we get to the big guys, uh, not sure if Mike's able to break up this whole video, so but I'm kind of bringing in an intro. Yeah, uh, he will. He will be able. Hopefully, to. Mike is the mad scientist able to do it, and and we're not uh, all of the all the in between weights and conversations aren't on there. Uh, but we get this weight class. I'm excited about this one, Glenn, because we got guys that can wrestle, uh, and I we said it all year. Like, sure, times we get guys that are the, the dancing bears, and they just kind of push each other around. But we got some guys that can really strap up and go. Um, and again, uh, I think that as it's been all year, Freddie Redder and Julian LaVenture on a crash course to, to, to face each other. Um, I, I, and again, I, I can't, I can't believe we have this one the same way too. So I got to see LaVenture and, uh, Farball. Uh, man, they are some big boys. Oh, Farabaugh is Farabaw. a monster and LaVenture is a monster. And LaVenture. Uh, it was so funny. The, the official gave uh, LaVenture the ankle bracelet and he just handed it right back. He's like, uh, are you not, kidding me? Not doing it's it. It's like not even close. So uh, the, these are some big boys that can move. Um, yeah, they're, and Redder's a wrestler. Collins is a wrestler. Collins, does, Collins looks like a, you know, line, not even a linebacker. Like, you know, he looks like the, the whole front line, uh, yep. you know, the football team. And he's lightning quick and agile. So. Uh, yep. I'm really impressed with these heavyweights too. It's going to be exciting because now you're going to see those guys get, all get to wrestle the same level guys. Uh, yeah. Cause you know, these guys cruise in the season. I mean, Collins had some great matches too uh, during the year because of district duels, but, um, and he was challenged by a couple, couple guys in league, but you know, for LaVenture and Farball and uh, Mac and, and Collins and Redder now, I mean, they, this is, this is getting juicy for them. All right, so I'm going. I'm Tom. I'm, I'm right at the gate. Here's 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 my opinion. The two best matches in the first round: it's gonna be Ryan Brennan, Bailey Schindel, two third place finishers. Uh, you know, Bailey Schindel Jr. from Kennett, Brennan from Ben Salem. Again, you you mentioned Ben Salem. Brennan again, heavyweight's kind of a little bit different. Um, you know, you don't have to necessarily be the best wrestler to be successful. And the other match I'm really excited to see um, is going to be that Liam Keevil, uh Troy Mack rematch um and that was a semi-final match last week yes and um again i i've been all i've been on the mac train since early in the season and he's been real surprising as a sophomore winning 30 matches i'm really excited to see him at this level um but like we got guys like that can wrestle i got you know cole euchre a freshman at at heavyweight and wrestling between heavyweight and 215 27 and six. And again, that's not the old PV schedule they re- that they, that they're wrestling. They went to escape the rock this year. They went to Trojan wars. Like they, you know, PV schedule with new coach, I believe his name is Dave Thomas has really elevated that program in the right direction. And uh, it's, it, it's, it's nice to see, like, you know, they, they had some nice wins this year. They, they suffered some injuries down the stretch. So we didn't see the true PV team at, at district. Yeah. Wars. I mean, more, there's more than one Euchre brother, right? There's three of them. There's three of them. Yeah. Um, Carter didn't make it out of districts. He's a freshman. Nah, they were, and then the other uh, guy was hurt, right? Uh, yes. Uh, other one was um, uh, got hurt. The other one was split time between two fifteen and happy weight. So, but uh, yeah, you I'm gonna I'm gonna throw I'm gonna say something too about this lower Moreland kid. Um, you know, I made made a uh, I was doing my SOL write up on Suburban One Sports.com, my my preview, and, and my comment was that you know Hegedus has not seen this type of level at AAA. Um, nor has he seen it in his schedule at Lower Moreland at all. But you know, wrestling mostly Double A, and even in that that suburban one league um, division, that's a little bit lighter than the others. Um, and I did make a comment that you know uh, he's not seen this this level of competition. And, and now that he got the regionals here in, in the Triple A, um, I think there's going to be another interesting match with Hegedus and Mahoney. And I have Hegedus winning there. I think that's one of the, the only differences that I have, uh, Joe. Um, and I have Schindel and Bre- I have uh, Brennan over Schindel. Again, that's another good match. So, um, yeah, there's there's going to be some good ones here uh, right in the prelim. So uh, I, I'm very interested to see how the, the Lower Moreland senior does uh, uh, at the AAA level. Yeah. Um, yeah, I went with Mahoney. He's been, he's been in the rankings all year and, and Schindel, I'm, I've been I've been a, a fan of as well since last year. Seen him wrestle uh, in in the postseason. Um, you know, we look at Redder. I think Redder and, and Leventure on a collision course. I think Redder beats him. I think Redder's athleticism uh, will neutralize uh, you know what Leventure is able to do. 
Uh, if LaVenture can't get to that blast double, um, you know, I, Redder can just, I, I feel, out-wrestle him in certain positions. He can defend what he wants to do. But on the flip side of it, I don't know. It, it's it, LaVenture's tough to score on. Like, like I'm Redder just going to say that. You know that that's the that's the that like this is gonna be like a, a battle of of who can you know it might be a one nothing match but it might be like a real exciting one nothing match. Yeah, so. I think I think the big difference here uh, is to what you're saying that you know if Leventure can't get to the Bloom double I call it or the blast double or the blow through double, um, you know he is going to have problems with Redder and, and Redder has a double of his own. Mm -hmm. uh, that that's you, you can't but he he. It, you can't go under the big boy and he also can get under you. He, he can get those hooked. Um, and we've seen him just pick people up. Um, and, and, you know, uh, Julian's, he's a monster. I mean, they, these are two physical, you know, athletes, football players. I mean, it's going to be a battle Royale. I have Redder winning. Um, and I know LaVenture has kind of been ranked, uh, you know, higher than him throughout the year here and there. Uh, at the state level and, and stuff like that. But I, I think that kind of, uh, you know, th this is a match that, you know, one of the ones that you want to really see this is a final you want to see a two really good big men going out, yeah. but there's going to be some good ones before this too, you know? Yeah. So I mean, Redder, Redder and LaVenture, LaVenture ranked there in the state right now in the latest rankings and, and Redder at six. I yeah. mean, you have two top six guys in the state that we're going to see in the final or potentially see in the final. Uh, but like you, we, we started to backtrack and we dissect this, this winner's bracket. Um, you know, Euchre, I got him winning Collins, uh, Faribault. I have Mac beating Keyville. Uh, I got Mahoney winning and LaVenture obviously. Uh, and that Mac Faribault match, that might be, that's going to be the, the, the gem of that quarterfinal rounds. Um, you have two contract, you have two super athletic heavies, uh, contrasting body styles like Faribault, big, strong, long, uh, Mac, a little bit more compact. Um, and I think they're going to, I think Mac is going to be out there because there's going to be more real estate to tack in, at, at Farabaugh's legs. I think he's going to be able to, to use that to his advantage. Uh, he stays in good position when he wrestles. And I just like, uh, I like his style against Farabaugh. Farabaugh like doesn't open up a lot and, and Mac's going to be able to pick uh, his, his spots and uh, from, from neutral. Yeah. I have that. I have that outcome a little bit different. I have, I have Farabaugh winning just based on, uh, what I got to see last last weekend because I had not seen uh, him at all. Um, so that was, you know, he was surprisingly uh, athletic, uh, you know, really agile and quick. Uh, wrestling LaVenture is, is no easy task, and he kind of could keep pace. So um, I have Fireball winning that and, and a rematch with LaVenture and LaVenture winning. But, but again, the, the, again, Collins and Euchre is a toss-up. Um, Farbro, Mac to toss up, um, and obviously the venture and, and Red are the two uh, that that kind of are the faves here. So it's going to be a be again. You know, when we drop down here, I, we might have a little bit of difference, but I, I kind of feeling that we have the same feeling that this, the top five guys are going to go here. Yeah. So let's drop now. Let's talk about our. Um, I, I I think I should say, and not just because it's an O and J guy, but Blake Fisher had three wins on the on the regular season. He won four matches at districts last week. I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, for him to go out uh, like a senior like that uh, for his efforts, he gets Freddie Redder in the first round. So, uh, you know, maybe he might be think second guessing that, uh, that, that move last week, but uh, nevertheless, like it's, it's cool when you see things like that, he had uh, hit some hard times this season and uh, to win more matches in one day than he did the whole season was, uh, was a pretty rewarding thing. Um, anyways, we drop down, we look here. Uh, I got Fisher and Brennan, I got Brennan beating Fisher uh, Capel Morris got Capel beaten hit Morris, uh, Chivarelli from Phoenixville. Uh, Keevil going to be just way too much for him. Chivarelli is a little bit of an undersized heavyweight. Uh, and I got wit from, uh, Norristown is really tough. And, you know, Norristown's only regional qualifier, but I got him being, uh, you know, beating, uh, uh, Hegedus or Hegedus. Um, but that his, uh, his wins are short lived as, as he'll lose to, uh, Schindle. I got uh, Keeble being Euchre. I think Keeble's going to be too much for, for the freshman uh, as far as like a, a big guy uh, to wrestle. Uh, Farabaugh, you know, rallying, being, being Capel. Uh, Mahoney being Brennan. And then Farabaugh being Mahoney again. They, those guys have wrestled several times throughout the years, and this year as well. Uh, Farabaugh and Collins. I got Col Farabaugh beating Collins. 
based on what we talked about, Glenn, with his, his athleticism, you know, as athletic as Collins is and as well as he can move, uh, I think Farabaugh is going to stay in good position, not, you know, not get, not get, uh, you know, hooked, not get snapped down and spun behind on. Um, and I, I think he'll pick his, pick and choose his attacks. Uh, then you like have Mac on the drop down from the, from the semis and him uh, rematch with Schindler. I got Mac winning and then Farabaugh uh, beating Mac um, uh, for third. And I got Schindel beating Collins for fifth place. All right. So I have a little bit different, obviously with, uh, Fireball in the semis. Um, so I have Collins and Fireball here in the um, you know third place match. Uh, I'm going to stick with that, um, and and I have uh, you know Fireball winning that one, like you said, It'll be the same deal. And then I have um, you know Mac down below, uh, getting it done for the fifth place spot. So that's just just my opinion, obviously, because it's a little bit different with the, the way you or your top bracket was and mine with, with Farbo was a big change. So, it, you know, again, these are going to be exciting big men matches. Um, I, I got to say in the last, you know, several years, we've had a resurgence in the big men uh, with the Giorgio and Collins and, and Lucas Doyle kind of with that rivalry uh, and our heavyweights uh, kind of getting back to when, when we had a big run of heavyweights in the state finals. Um, so, you know, this is an exciting time for the big men. Uh, and again, you know, again, Quaker Town, if they need points, you know, uh, Redder's going to get it done. I mean, uh, we both have them winning it over LaVenture. But again, just these, these Quaker Town big men, uh, when they need points, they go and get them. And we saw the Council Rocks out at the beginning of the season for Quaker Town. So, I mean, let, let's just talk real quick as we wrap up, Joe, because we only have a few minutes. All right. So, Glenn and I are just going to, you know, chat for a second, close this out. And, we're going to just give our predictions on team race and, uh, you know, we'll go from there. We, we, we gave every weight class, um, we gave our picks, we talked, we agreed, we disagreed, we laughed, uh, and, and, you know, again, had fun doing it. Uh, but, uh, as we look at the team race here, I, Glenn, I, I think you're going to agree with me. It's like, it's a two team race. Um, as far as, uh, I'm sorry for the movement. Um, uh, it, it's a two team race. In my opinion, it's, it's rock South and it's Quaker town. Uh, they're the two teams that are equipped the most to, to put the most guys through. Uh, and you know, you look at guys, uh, you know, if I'm going off the top of my head, uh, we had Ziegler, uh, and guy as potential locks, uh, to win their respective weight classes. Um, you know, right, throw Redder in there now too. You know, uh, the yeah, ten, yeah. Potential champions. Uh, and then you go from there, you got, you know, you got him again, you got Borzio, uh, Black, to, Blackman, uh, Blackman Redder. As well. um, as, and um, as guys that potentially, you know, maybe Adamson wins some matches there uh, as a senior. Uh, he was a guy who was like 28 and three last year. And, you know, I don't know if he's had some struggles that, that he's gotten a, to a heavier weight or what, or right. just. Um, and but, Kate, you know, Kate and Rosner, they, they uh, all yeah, we've about points. him too. So they, these guys yeah. can all score points. That that's the difference, I think, in this tournament. That Quaker Town has kids that are going to win matches and they're going to get bonus points. Uh, you know, listen, Council Rock South, is you go Council Rock South, and we talked they, they, about they could win three in a row. They could win right. 45, they could go 52, 52 and 60. And, 60 and, and, and really put a stronghold on it there. Like that could like, you know. And, and, and that's what's kind of cool. Like, this is where I'll say it's cool that you have the uh, all, th all three matches being wrestled at once. Because then, like, you know, they win those three matches. And then, like, you, uh, the Quaker Town will have potentially Lockman, uh, potentially Rosner, uh, and, um, and Redder still coming up. That yeah. they might need them to win in order to win the, the regional title. So, it's pretty cool. But, like, you know, we start talking about – Rock South, you know, you, you start down at the bottom. You got Redder, uh, Ryder at, at, at 106. You got um, uh, Brillhart. You got Gavin Cole. You got and, and you um, have you have you have Bod in there. I mean, he, oh, Bod, I haven't seen a kid. He's been wearing he's been wearing the mask. mask. He's been wearing the mask. I haven't seen him yet. But um, you know, those guys can pick up points too. And Brillhart could be a bracket buster. Next thing you know, he's in the finals, and we have it. You know, Quaker Town's going to be you know again have really forced. Uh, to, to get bonus points later on. And, and this is what you kind of like in a, in a team regional title hunt. You have two teams that really have a nice rivalry with a dual meet, uh, you know, winning the, 
winning a dual meet in the beginning of the year, then losing the dual meet in the team championships of district one duels. And then you have uh, them edging them at, at district. So it really has set up a, a really, you know, uh, you know, kind of a, a nice regional uh, rivalry between, you know, Council Rock South and Quaker Town right now. You know, there, there are a couple other teams that can get a, a couple chance, but I, I don't really see that, um, you know, in, in, unless something, you know, kind of is off kilter. Uh, but, you know, these are the two teams that can get multiple champs. Uh, these are two teams that can get multiple uh, bonus points every time they're, they're, their guys are in, in almost every weight class. I mean, it, it's all about how many guys you bring. I know Strathaven's bringing a lot. I think um, how many are coming from? Anderson's bringing, I think Branderson's bringing eight. Okay. So, you know, number numbers game's important too. Um, but, you know, I, I don't think – I think you're right. This is a two, two first race. And let's talk about the top five. I mean, uh, CB East could do it. They could get back in the top five. They were, I think, third uh, over in, in the East. Um, who, who else do you think can, can be in that top five? Uh, Springboard going to be has, able? Uh, Springford, yeah, because they, they – you know, you look back, you know, Gus Smith, you, they're, they're tough at the bottom. You got Gus Smith, Cole Smith, uh, Ortlip, Quinn Smith. Uh, so, you know, there's four guys right there. Attilio is going to win matches. Lapore is going to win matches for them. So, you know, there's, you start to add up those points. That's, that's big. Henderson, you know, again, you, you hit the nail on the head and, uh, you know, in talking with coach Begley, uh, you know, on and on, you know, throughout the season, he, he'll be the first say, I don't have, I don't have a superstar. He's like, I got a lot of guys that can go. And th- those are guys that like, they've showed it time and time again, they show up and, and they perform. So if they do that, he didn't have to have a lot of state qualifiers. He's got to he just have guys win matches. Like, you know, and I think that's going to be, that's going to be a, a, a Tim. I'm going to say, I'm going to go out on a limb and say, you know, you're going to see um, Kennett up there. You're going to see a team like Strathaven uh, in there. Garner Valley, you can't dispel them. We kind of slept on them. Like, you know, you start talking, you got uh, Ricci, you got Ricky, you got Wood, you have Hussein, you have the Trollio. Um, I'm trying to miss someone else. Uh, maybe Olinger wins a match or two. Uh, they got Mahoney at the top at heavyweight. Like they got guys too. And Mahoney, he's, he's, he, you know, he's tough. Like he could just because we didn't pick him to go far as me. It's not going to happen. We yeah. all know heavyweight. It's all how it's sometimes how, just how you fall. Yeah. Uh, I, but and, I, I, I kind of disagree with the Garner Valley squad this year. I, I don't, I don't think they have the firepower. Um, I don't think they're going to win early matches and, and win often if the, the guys, that do win, they're not going to get far. I mean, I, I think there's a couple guys that can get to the semis for them, but uh, I, I don't. The Garner Valley to me isn't the top five team in an individual tournament anymore. Uh, like you said, Henderson may may accumulate a lot of points um, because they do have high caliber kids you know, with Cortez, and you know the Palmer Delaney is going to get score points. I mean, the, the, that fifth, fourth, and fifth teams are kind of tough. To look at, I mean, you look at some of these other. I mean, Central Bucks West could end up putting up points. I mean, if uh, you know Teague McCormick and uh, you know Dorgio wins and and Kelly, I mean, they they could rack up some points with three guys. I mean, I've seen that happen. Um, so it's really going to be to guys and get guys deep in the semis or come back and and win a lot of matches and, and take third place to get those extra third place points. So those the, the constellations have won regionals and. Uh, I go back to the section days when Penn Ridge beat Upper Perk. I thought Tom Hans was going to, he, he was questioning the whole scoring system. And, um, you know, we we're going back and looking at buys and forfeits. You remember those days. So those days are over. You got to earn your points. But, um, you know, I've seen a lot of tournaments run from sectionals all the way through to regionals, won by the Constellation and the Wrestleback. Um, so it, it's going to be that way with Council Rock South and Quakertown. Um, you know, I think CB East might have enough firepower to, to, to come back in third there too, but um, we'll, we'll see down in town West. It might be a surprising, decent, uh, you know, uh, regional team too. We just talked about that with their upper guys. If they, if they pull through, I mean, they're right there. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, we'd even mentioned Boyertown or Penridge. Yeah. Again, you, they just numbers and, and, and a couple of high placers. And next thing you know, your, your guys wrestling back, you get a couple of fifth place uh, state qualifiers or guys that wrestle to that, uh, you know, Conti, um, you know, semifinals. I mean, they, they you're going to win one, two, three, you know, potentially four matches before you even get there. So it, it really is going to come down to a numbers game for that third, fourth, fifth place uh, with with wins and and high place points. So bonus points, you know, 
uh, are, are a big difference too. I, I don't know what kind of you know firepower we're going to see. I, I think I see we're going to see a lot more closer matches than we've seen in, in the districts. I, I think there are a lot of falls. Yeah, think, uh, yeah Ian, uh, there's going to be a lot of like uh, you know guys wrestling tight. Um, you know we have you know we yeah, have a lot of I noticed as I went through practice we have a lot of seniors who who have been here before and haven't made it and. It's gonna be interesting to see if they if they tighten up, you know, if they tighten up and they don't they don't wrestle to win and they wrestle not to lose, oh, and how that's gonna affect their their uh their standing at the end of the day at the end of the weekend. So yeah, like that that's, like, that's one thing that I, like I, I took notice of. It wasn't like I guess if we're talking trends, just a lot of seniors that have been in this situation before and haven't and maybe haven't performed their best. Yeah, you're gonna see a lot of those. I I think we see you start to see obviously you start to see the the two ones and the one zeros and the three, two matches and the four, three with those really, really high caliber kids. Um, but I think you'll see a lot of like seven, five, eight, six, like takedown at the buzzer, like a lot of like, you know, crazy matches. We saw Shippy was in a crazy match with Straub that stalled from HH in the finals. Like the, the officials couldn't, they just were going nuts with, with what was happening. So there's going to be some of those like, you know, kind of crazy match. I hope those guys open up too, Joe. I know exactly what you're talking about. And some of the kids too that you're talking about that, you know, now and now is their time. They get that opportunity. You got to let it fly. You only get one opportunity, uh, you know, and, and everyone in the bracket has a ch- the same chance to go to state. Um, you know, we're taking five guys. We're taking almost, a, a you know, a, a third of this bracket to state. So, um, yeah, I, I'm excited. It, it, this is the first time in a long time where I'm really excited about the Southeast reason chances at Hershey. I think, uh, you know, I think, I think we covered it all. Uh, you know, we, we gave a, a comprehensive preview of regionals here. Uh, and uh, as always, I, you know, I'm, uh, I'm thankful that you took some time to, to come on and, and spend the evening, uh, you know, these late hours uh, talking oh, no, with me. Fun, man. No, always. Uh, I look for you know uh, being there f- right from right from the jump on Friday, uh, being yeah. there Saturday for the for the semis, and uh, you know th- you know that's like a weekend in Oxford, you know, uh, uh, in March to, to broadcast the finals. It's going to be uh, a great weekend out there. So we'll see everyone out there. Again, as always, thanks for tuning in. This is uh, Joe and Glenn. We're out. Hi, good, good night. night.